All right, everyone, here's another one. Um, to honor those who are really contacting me and reaching out in hopes that they would study better and get some answers with some questions they had a hard time on, uh, I wanted to give you three, so this is going to be a series of three different videos, um, just giving test uh, example test questions uh, just to help you focus your attention of where I wouldn't consider it to be sneaky, but you might because you're just, you know, you're, you're run down and bogged down by a lot of different kinds of questions and you're still sort of memorizing maybe just to get by, it's going to be tough. So uh, I'm going to format these kinds of videos to by uh, giving you an example question, uh, running you through it, and then giving you maybe one or two more examples that you can do on your own. So feel free to pause these videos anytime or when I ask you to prompt, uh, when I prompt you to stop the video, try it on your own and then I'll take it up together. This particular question, uh, you'll see soon, but I will title it as Solving for the Exact Value of Ratios that Give an Obscure Angle, so that are not 30 degrees, 45 degrees, or 60 degrees, using, and you, it also asks you to use co-functions to help simplify. Now, 30, 45, 60, throw that out the window. I'm going to start using pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3, so get used to it. A question like this, it's a two-parter. Um, but I would say it's basically about three marks because uh, it might take, I might just give you one mark for knowing your co-functions and then maybe one mark for calculating correctly and then one mark for getting the right answer, something like that. Okay, and the main concept in this question comes from chapter 4.3. So here we go. Uh, state the co-function of cosine 23 pi over 12. Right off the bat, if you're using co-functions, um, refer to the chart or the big, just the whole number of different formulas I gave you, uh, if you are still memorizing. But for me, here's how I would approach it without really looking at that as reference. Seeing this, it is just shy of 2 pi. It is underneath 2 pi, right? 24 pi over 12, which means I know that it is going to be in quadrant to 4. Okay? Knowing that this is in quadrant 4, I can rewrite cosine as a sum of 3 pi over 2 plus some co-related angle. I'm going to call it theta c just for the sake of, right? And um, I mean 12 as a denominator, 2 as a denominator, 3 pi over 2 is equivalent to 18 pi over 12 plus some related angle. So what is this angle going to be to make this, I guess, a sum equal 23 pi over 12? Well, that's easy. This, it must be 5 pi over 12, right? 18 plus 5, that's 23. So since I know what the co-related, the angle is going to be, if I were to use co-functions to write an equivalent equation, rather equivalent expression, this is going to turn into sine positive or negative for now of 5 pi over 12. Okay, so that angle is preserved. The question now is, is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? Uh, I'd like you to consider again, casserole, C-A-S-T. Quadrant 4 is here, which means if I were to change cosine into its co-function, or if I change the reciprocal ratio secant into its co-function, it will remain positive. Since this is cosine and it's converting into sine, it is going to be positive. So there it is. And that's it. It's just, it's one mark for knowing that. At first glance, it might seem confusing, but again, I really urge you to take your time, just think about it, so that next time it asks you something like this, you'll be able to calculate it, okay? Uh, part B then asks, give me the exact value of this, so exact value of your answer from part A. Well, sine 5 pi over 12, now there's a couple of ways you could do this, uh, but I think the easiest way is to apply a cast rule. Notice that sine 5 pi over 12 is 
uh, essentially just shy of 6 pi over 12, which is, you know, pi over 2, that's 90 degrees. So this is already in quadrant 1. Okay, so let's work it out. Um, so off the top of my head, let me just make sure that this is correct. Right, ooh. Yeah, this actually, we can't solve it right away. This angle or this rotation is not one of the special triangle angles. Okay, it is not one of the miles, so it's not 30, 45, and 60. Um, to give you a better idea, if you were to convert it, you will see that 5 pi over 12 radians is equivalent to 75 degrees. So how do I calculate the correct answer to 75 degrees? This brings us back to um, 4.4. This is uh, chapter 4.4 where we have to use compound angles. Sine 5 pi over 12 is equivalent to the sum of 3 pi over 12 and 2 pi over 12, which if I were to simplify it, you would recognize it a lot easier. Right? It's a pi over 6 and pi over 4. So using your compound angle formulas, this is going to equal sine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle, plus cosine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. That will be your one mark. Okay, so this was one mark. This is another one mark. And if you were to use your special triangles to calculate the correct uh, exact values of each, then you can find the final exact value of this expression. And that would be, or sine 75 percent, uh, degrees, 5, 5 pi, sine 5 pi over 12, excuse me. So sine pi over 4, do, 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 using special triangles, that is 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2. We'll probably get there later. Multiply by cosine of 1 over 6 is going to be root 3 over 2, plus cosine of pi over 4, do, 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 again, this, or root 2 over 2. Multiply by sine, what to root 3 over 2. Well, what do you know? Wait. Uh, incorrect. Shame on me. That's 1 over 2. So if I uh, multiply it out and simplify it, this becomes... Okay. And um, if you were to rationalize that, and I highly urge you, you know what, I'm going to make sure that you do, it is going to be 4 over root 6 plus root 2. And there is your final answer. Okay, and that's your extra mark. Okay. Uh, any point from here, go back and see if you want a better explanation. I'm going to clear all this and ask you to do the same stuff for essentially the same things, but using different ratios. And you may find uh, state co-function, you may find that some of them are worth two marks because you actually can get an easier answer out of it, okay? Of, let's see, let's try sine of that same angle. I think it's a good one. And then try cotangent of that same angle. See what those two get you. Now I'm just sort of pulling this out of my butt. I'm assuming that it will be nice numbers. I haven't tried it myself, but now is a good time for you to pause the video and give it a shot. Considering that these are both, let's say, I'm assuming, each are worth three marks, see if you can complete um, the co-function portion and then give the exact value all together uh, about five minutes each. So together, see if you can complete it in 10 minutes. Okay. And pause the video now and I will begin answers soon. You got it? Okay. Assuming you pause the video and you gave yourself a chance to solve it on your own, here are the answers in three, two, Okay, once again, knowing that this is in quadrant four, I'm going to rewrite this as a sum of two different angles. 
And just to make my life a little bit easier, I am going to rewrite this with the same denominator, which, as you know from previous calculation, this is going to be 5 pi over 12. Sine 18 pi over 12 plus 5 pi over 12. Now, from here, I am going to convert to the co-function, so that's cosine of 5 pi over 12. But stop right there. I do not know if this is going to be a positive or a negative. I need to check by cast rule. If I'm in quadrant 4, the only function that will remain a positive once converted to its co-function is cosine. Right now, sine is being converted to cosine, and therefore, it will not remain a positive. This is cosine of 5 pi over 12. And again, uh, that will be part 1. Uh, part B, so I'm going to put a little dot there. Part B, because this is an obscure angle, it is not uh, considered a part of, uh, what do you call it, considered uh, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. I will have to turn this into a sum of or a compound angle formula, sum of two different angles which is pi, pi over 4, pi over 6. I'll rewrite that. Negative cosine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Okay, Keeping negative here, I'm going to use my compound angle formula. Cosine with an addition means I have cos pi over 4, cos pi over 6, minus sine pi over 4, sine pi over 6. And then once I find the final answer, I put a negative in front of it. Cosine of that would be root 2 over 2 times cosine pi over 6 is 1 over 2 minus sine pi over 2 over 2. Over two. Let's see, root. Nope, this is root 2, which means I did it something wrong. I made an error. Pi is root 3 over 2. Oh, again, excuse me. Okay. So if I were to solve this, this becomes negative root 6 minus root 2 over 4, or negative root 6 plus root 2 over 4. Either one, I would accept. Nice. Notice how it didn't take me 5 minutes, right? Uh, you'll get there. Cotangent, 23 pi over 12. Once again, I would notice if I had to use my co-function, I am turning this into its co-function, which is tangent. The question is what? This is in quadrant 4, so I can rewrite cotangent um, as a sum of uh, two brackets. And again, you, you've done this before, so you know that this is going to be Okay. But remember, this is quadrant 4, and CAST only cosine and its reciprocal secant are going to remain positive, which means that's going to be a negative 10. And that's it. That's part A. Let's move on. If you were to rewrite this as a sum of pi over 4 plus pi over 6, the compound angle formula for tangent is a little bit more, I guess, stuffy, a little bit more convoluted, but at the same time, it's not really. Let's take a look. I just need to remind myself. It would be oh, what would it be? Render tan tan a b over. <laughs> Gotta correct me if I'm wrong. 10 pi over 4 plus 10 pi over 6 divided by 1. Since that's an addition, this is the addition and that remains negative. I hope I'm not embarrassing myself on video. Let me just double check my notes. Oh, 
point and moving on if I'm making stuff like this wrong, right? Darn. Do I have to check the internet? Let me pause the video for a second. Okay, I wasn't crazy. That is that is what it was. All right. Um, solving this, we have tangent. Oof. Forty-five. That would be one plus tangent of. Six pi over three, one, two, two over three. So we have uh, this pi over six, it's one over root three over one minus one times one over root three. That would give you, let me erase this because I need some space. Let's uh, restart here. That's negative 1 plus 1 over root 3 over 1 minus 1 over root 3. If I were to rationalize this, it would be uh, root 3 plus 1 over root 3 over root 3 minus 1 over root 3. And if I were to take this fraction divided by that fraction, it would be root 3 plus 1 root 3 times root 3 over root 3 minus 1. And that would give me negative root 3 plus 1 over root 3 minus 1. Mm. And I need to rationalize the denominator, so I'm going to do a little trick by multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, which will allow the numerator to be 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 1 and all over 3 minus 1 that's a 2. So if I were to simplify this, this is negative 4 plus 2 root 3 over 2 or negative 2 plus root 3. In other words, negative 2 minus root 3. And that's a bit long. Um, something like that, because maybe the tangent is a little longer, maybe it would be worth four marks. Either way, the steps and the concept and what you're trying to accomplish is the same. The compound angle formula simply made this a little bit more messy. Okay. Uh, hope that clarified. Try some other questions out or hunt down questions like this from the textbook to see if you can test your metal. Hope this was helpful and study hard.